Hello, I am Joel McLeod. And I am Roland Tanner. And welcome to the 905er. Last week, we made a promise to you, the listener. We were tired of 2020. We were tired of only the stories that fed into the misery and dismay that have marked this year. And so we decided that we'd focus the remaining bit of this year on good news stories and stories that would help lift us up. One of those stories is of Trevor Posniak and Sandy Stark. At the beginning of this pandemic, as our favorite restaurants were forced to close suddenly, they took action to help save many of our favorite places to eat. Trevor and Sandy took to Facebook to start up a page to help restaurants promote themselves online. Since the beginning of the pandemic, they have started pages for Burlington, Oakville, Hamilton, Guelph, and London, with copycat pages popping up in Niagara. They have been indispensable during the pandemic for local restaurants to survive, introducing people to restaurants they'd otherwise not be aware of, and in some cases, giving new life to restaurants to help them survive the pandemic. The On Restaurants Facebook pages have grown to have over a combined number of 36,000 members. Trevor and Sandy's part-time hobby has put a new meaning on the expression pivoting in 2020. So what are they going to be doing with this new social media clout? Well, for starters, they're using it in their largest on restaurants group for Burlington to help raise funds for the local food bank. We wanted to reach out to them to talk about how this project happened, how it's grown during the pandemic, and what their future is for 2021. So we recommend that you turn up the volume, order your favorite takeout, and please have a listen. I'd like to thank Sandy and Trevor for coming on the 905er today. Why don't we start at the beginning? Trevor and Sandy, why don't you tell us about the restaurant Facebook groups that you're operating throughout most of the 905 region and I think some of the 519 region as well. How did that start and where it's kind of grown during this pandemic? Well, uh, my, um, well, first of all, I got laid off, not laid off, but I was sent home with um, full pay by my employer uh, when COVID hit. And so all of a sudden I was at home with some time on my hands. So I was sitting down in my basement. Um, I still remember exactly Sandy and Jace were watching TV and I was sitting on my computer as usual, playing with some kind of electronics. And I thought, wow, when the restaurants all were forced to close their dining rooms and I have some friends who own restaurants that I wish there was something I could do. So um, I, I just went on to Halton Dine Safe and was able to get a complete list of every restaurant in Halton and just started to um, contact every single one. Um, so um, it took a, you know, a good few days to get a hold of them all. And uh, fortunately, I got a shout out by the mayor of Burlington saying this is a good um, um, you know, thing that I'm doing for the community. So that was, went out on, on the official Twitter for Burlington as well. And how many communities do you have these Facebook pages set up for? I know you have Burlington, Oakville, Hamilton. Yeah. I think there are a few others. Do you have a rough number of how many you have right now? Yeah, so the um, Burlington is the largest one uh, with 16,000 people. And then we've also got Oakville, Hamilton, London. Um, those are the large ones. And I have been trying to grow Guelph, although it's growing quite slowly, and uh, recently launched Milton as well. So the goal is to try to get um, as many of the communities on there. And, and once it's set up, then it, it's, it's up to the community to kind of embrace it and, and, and help out their, their community. Uh, there's also a really big one in Niagara that we don't run, but was started inspired by the Burlington one, and we've been we have communicated with him a fair bit. Marcel, who runs the the uh, Niagara one, yeah. So that one actually is huge. It has twenty five thousand people on it. So he actually saw what we were doing, and he had, he runs a winery in Niagara. So he decided that um, he thought it was a good idea, and he started one in Niagara. Like literally four days later. And so we've been running back and forth with each other a little bit on, you know, how to, you know, uh, moderate and, and how to grow the group and things like that. And what's the response kind of been? I know you said you had 16,000 and growing in Burlington. That's, I mean, I, I, we'd love to have that, those numbers here. What's the response been in generally from people uh, contacting from both restaurateurs and uh, the general public alike? The public has been f fantastic. They they all have. The restaurants have been very thankful, very grateful. Those that are participating, um, some of them not not everybody grasps social media yet. There's still a component of those owners who are very busy and they they don't really do a lot of social media. So those ones are just sort of slowly dipping their toe in, or they need a little more guidance. But um, the biggest, the most amazing 
and surprising thing was how fast it grew in the community. Um, we just started growing by the thousands really quickly. And, um, I, I, I hopped on with Trevor to try to help him manage those volumes once it hit around a thousand members in Burlington, but we're, we're I think just over 16,000 now. And it kind of slowed down once we started to see things open up, but people, it's really hit an emotional spot for them, I think, because they've, they really, really um, want to be part of something that's helpful. And, and I think people really understand that, um, the restaurants, yes, they are. There's business owners that are suffering, and there's workers and stuff. But really, the restaurant industry is a huge employer uh, in Canada and in Ontario. And it's not just the workers, but you know, there's suppliers, and it, there's a real big ripple effect to when when these businesses go down. So, um, and these are members of our community. They usually live nearby. They work in in the same cities. So they've been people have been really 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 positive and active on the group but obviously restaurants are, are really at the heart of every community and uh, it's so good to see i mean i'm just looking at, at the page right now Sixteen thousand members that's almost like one in ten people in burlington is signed up that's amazing <laughs> absolutely amazing Really, it's almost like a phenomenon to see something have that level of take up. It is really amazing. So, I mean, can you describe what it is that the for anybody who hasn't already found the page, what it is that the page kind of does for for the restaurants that are uh, members? Is it is it just like sort of sharing information, or what do you do, so to speak? Um, I think primarily the first point to get across is that it's not a review page. It's not like you're going to find on Google reviews or TripAdvisor or Yelp or any of those other pages where you get a whole um, range of reviews, some very negative, some very positive. What it really is is a support page. That's what we've always said. It's, it's to boost, to bolster, to lift up these businesses and to share all the things that you like about them. So that's what the members do. They, they get on there and it's everything from, hey, and yes, we have had the question about a million times, who's got the best chicken wings? And there's a lot of repetition. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, who, so who does? That's time to set the record straight. <laughs> we can't play favorites. There's a lot, but you know, we, we've tried lots. Yeah, of things. we've tried a lot. We've eaten a lot of food. <laughs> so, but uh, so they share their favorites. They they make recommendations, and it's also a place where the restaurants themselves can get on and post their specials and their their deal, like whatever they you know put advertising on there really for free. Uh, I'm just seeing some really amazing photographs right this second of uh, it's got some pasta here. We've got some some Indian food. Oh, I really love Indian food. <laughs> I'm getting super hungry just looking at this. Uh, that one, that's 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 fantastic. And I mean, obviously, at the moment, really, I guess we're pretty much at the stage now where we're talking about takeout being the the main way. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. In in uh, in Halton. Um they can only have 10 people in the restaurant at a time. And so they're pretty much back to only takeout and delivery and actually Hamilton as well, same situation. So it's, it's actually quite dire for them because um, even our friends were saying, I've given up on trying to get into a restaurant with only 10, right? Cause you go there and it's usually always full and because the limit is so small. So they're, they really are relying just upon takeout and delivery. And then of course, um, a big topic on the group also has been the big three Uber, Skip, DoorDash um, that are charging um, 30% typically um, to the restaurants um, in their and, and they're taking in many cases much of the profits. Uh, and so as you were saying, it's it's kind of a challenging business. So to give away 30 is, is not ideal. So we've been encouraging uh, all the people on the group throughout the seven, eight months now to order direct from the restaurant and go pick it up as much as possible. Uh, we were talking with uh, last week's guest, Dylan, about the need to pivot because of the of the pandemic. And it seems to me like your project here is going to be a vital component of restaurants pivoting into 
being able to survive this pandemic, just to embrace social media, embrace the online marketplace, I guess, if you will. I'm not sure if that's the right terminology for what you guys are doing. But, you know, it's just that move to go online. And it's kind of a, a theme that we've been talking to a couple of entrepreneurs uh, the wine industry, as well as uh, Jason Cassis, who is a, a restaurateur in Hamilton. No doubt hit some of his restaurants are probably on the Hamilton page for you guys. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, how you view your page going forward to help out the restaurant industry, maybe not just in the 905, but in Ontario as a whole? Well, yeah, I, I, the goal of the group from the beginning was to um, level the playing field so that the restaurants, um, even the small ones, would have a shot of growing because that with the power of the social media if you've got well for instance one of the most popular ones in the group um, is called saving time so they got some really good photos taken of their key lime pie and i asked them after after um how many did you sell on father's day and they said to my shock they sold 300 pies in one day wow the the goal is is to really um help the small business owner um and the, the community really will promote um, you know, and discover things that they didn't know across the city um, that they love. And so that's the power of the group is, is not only just allowing the restaurants to have a place to uh, advertise for free, but a lot of people will say, hey, I'm looking for this. And then within an hour, you've got 100 responses and 25 restaurants across the city recommended that perhaps no one ever had heard of. And it's almost like you've got 16,000 friends to ask, where should I go for dinner tonight? Right. Mm-hmm. So um, that was kind of the goal. And we, we do have some plans. I, I mean, I am in talks to expand it even into Toronto. Um, we'll see if that happens. Um, that would be, you know, a huge project. Like you said, we've got maybe one in every 12 people in Burlington, but imagine if we had one in every 12 people in Toronto, how uh, much moderation that might need. Right. You know? <laughs> because it's, it's not, always, it's not always easy to keep it positive. Like we, we, we're, you know, not everyone agrees with us there on keeping it positive. I can only imagine that with 16,000 people plus the other sites that you're managing, yeah, that's a full time. I mean, are, are you literally the people doing the moderating or you do you have people doing that for you now? Um, on the Burlington group, we have ourselves and then we have, we've got one other, two other moderators. Um, but I think on the other sites, Trevor's kind of on his own. Well, Hamilton, I have a couple to help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, is that a fairly fairly arduous job? I mean, how much time does that sort of take? It was really in the first sort of we hit these we hit these benchmarks where sort of things get riled up. You know, we, we kind of coasted along to five thousand. Things were really steady and smooth sailing. We hit five thousand. We hit ten thousand. That's when you start to get. Um, people, I don't know. There's something about those numbers that were where the Maybe it's just welcoming new people that are getting used to the tone of the group that um, that haven't quite grasped that it's not really a place to come in and, and grieve about, you know, the, the restaurants or to launch complaints. So we kind of get these peaks and valleys of where, where people start to get fired up and things start to get out of control and you have to rein it in and then and then you, then it smooths out a little a little bit. So there's peaks and valleys and how busy it gets. I know here in Burlington, we have you know a taste of Burlington, which is a kind of a top down approach to kind of or tourism Burlington approach to help generate a culinary atmosphere or culinary vibe in the city. I've noticed though that the Facebook groups do that in exceptionally well, like very easily. Like, as you said, Trevor, you put out a question of I'm feeling like Indian tonight or who has the best pasta meal for your family. And like you said, you know, you'll get 16,000 people saying, no, you got to go here. You got to go here. And, and, you know, it's an incredible resource. It's kind of like, why didn't anybody do this before? I can see it as a huge resource of just being, because I'm, you know, full disclosure, I'm a member of the Burlington group and I love it. You just like, I feel like, like you said, chicken wings tonight, where do I go? And you'll get, you know, 16,000 people all argue, oh, no, you got to go here and there. It's one of those things, like, everybody's been trying to do this top-down approach to promote restaurant before COVID. And you kind of seem to have stumbled onto it because of the pandemic. Is it the necessity of the situation or just, you know, it only takes an emergency to kind of bring about this innovation? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know necessarily if it wasn't for COVID, if the group would grow as fast as it 
did because I literally launched it, I think maybe 10 days after I, I was sent home from my job and everyone was inside and there was so much unknown and people were afraid to go to the grocery store. And should I go out and even eat? I, I, my, my sister stayed home in her house for four months, you know? So um, it, it was, you know, it grew very fast because people were stuck in their houses. They're all um, on their devices, probably way more um, than they were before. And it gave them an, an opportunity to connect with other people in the community, I think. Um, and, you know, everybody needs their food, I think. So. But also it allowed, it gave them that, again, it struck that chord where they were doing something positive in a really difficult time where there was a lot of negativity and, and sadness and worry and, and it just allowed them to sort of maybe be part of controlling, controlling it a little bit where they felt that there was a lot that they couldn't control. And it's really nice to see social media being used in such a positive way because it so often isn't and sort of, yeah, it's being used both in a positive way, but it's also not, although you're promoting business, it's not a kind of for-profit enterprise that uh, necessarily that, you know, it, it's coming from people wanting to support restaurants in this time that is obviously absolutely brutal for restaurants. Um, that's a great thing to see. It's really, it's good to have these positive stories. Uh, and I guess, it, I mean, you know, much as there's been debate in the province over the last months about what it's safe to do, what we should be allowed to do, what the right level of restrictions are, the one thing everybody can agree with is that we want the restaurants to survive this thing and to come through the other side and be there and for successful business, you know, for people that were running successful businesses before to still be running successful businesses when this is all over. Um, yeah, I mean, congratulations on, uh, on doing this. It's really a, a wonderful thing to see. Thank you. Yeah, it, it has been really fun, I must say. Like, um, we've met so many wonderful people um, through the group and the community, and we've been able to even um, through some other projects. Um, we have Project Kindness. Um, one of the members of the group has been, um, well, I'll have Sandy go into a little bit more, but um, we've met so many wonderful people in the community that we would never would have met before. So it's actually kept me, I think it's kind of saved my sanity um, doing the groups because uh, if I didn't, I, I don't know, I, I would just be bored and, and pulling my hair out. But I've been um, just... Um, you know, I've been so busy doing the groups and growing the groups and, and um, helping the restaurants. And, and it's just, it's been a very, um, you know, enriching process for myself and, and Sandy. Like we've learned so much about Facebook. I actually deleted Facebook from my phone in January. I'm like, that's it. I'm, I'm, I've, I've had enough <laughs> of these memes and stuff like that. And then um, March hits and then I'm on it. Um, it's like, you, 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 you've been on your phone for 17 hours today on Facebook. Uh oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's like the Godfather. Just when I think about, it, they pull me back in. <laughs> yeah. It was nice to see so many other things kind of spin out of it. I like Trevor mentioned Project Kindness, for example. Don McEachran, um, he's a Burlington resident who started a project and and used the group to as a platform, and that was helping restaurants and people in need by getting gift cards for the restaurants, so they were getting food from the restaurants, and then people who otherwise couldn't would afford um to go out for something maybe a special occasion or um and then there's been food drives and just seeing the community come together has been really rewarding so let's go down that road i know that you currently on the burlington page have a food bank drive last i checked you're about sixty six hundred dollars raised for the burlington food bank why don't you share with us a little bit about that project so, um, actually, uh, my, the gentleman, Marcel, who runs the Niagara group, he did do a fundraiser there and he said it was for, I think a food bank there as well. And he said he, at the time he wasn't extremely successful, com um, in comparison to the number. But so what I did was I, I, um, I contacted, um, Cisco, the food supplier. I did manage to reach the president level of Cisco and they said, okay, we're going to assign someone, um, to you in the marketing department. Um, and I, I pitched them, let's set up um, a low cost a way for the food bank to buy whatever food they want. Um, and then whatever money is raised on Facebook um, will go directly into that account. So it took a few months to get that set up. 
And um, thankfully, uh, we're doing pretty well. We are actually going to extend that. It was supposed to end tonight, but we're going to extend that to the 15th of December. And, and we have a goal of $10,000 that we want to reach. And so that will definitely feed a number of families. I understand it's about $200 per week um, to fa- feed a, a family of four. Um, so that's kind of the, the numbers that I've seen. Well, that's just the kind of news that we need, especially for the holiday season, especially this year. So, yeah, great. That's fantastic news to uh, to hear for you guys. Congratulations on uh, a job well done. Thank you. Thanks. I think you asked earlier, where do you think the, the group will go forward? And so we don't have any plans to shut the group down. It was originally designed to be a, a short-term project um, to, to help the restaurants, but it seems like they need more of a long-term um, assistance and, and getting back on their feet. So um, you may notice we're running some contests on the different groups right now. Uh, and we've found that that really accelerates the number of people joining the groups. Um, so we, we've seen a huge jump in, in, in the groups that we've been running those. So we want to encourage more people to get, on the group and 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 more eyes we have on the group than more potential um obviously we have for their if they if the restaurant wants to put out an, um, an advertisement um they can put that out for free we're not charging it for restaurants uh, anything to, to post and then obviously when you ask where to get those wings then you've got more suggestions as well <laughs> so. Well, I mean, it, this podcast is going to reach more than just uh, Halton, Hamilton, and Milton. We're, we're hoping that folks in uh, as far as ways Pickering and Oshawa and Newmarket are going to be hearing this. If somebody's listening right now and they're thinking, we need that in my community, we need that in Pickering, we need that in, in Newmarket, can they get in touch with you to get to uh, ask for some guidance for some helping hands or pointers or maybe to tie into you guys? Yeah, like we're quite happy. I, I've seen um, there's a group like this. Obviously, the Niagara one's huge, 25,000. So there's 400,000 people in Niagara. He's done very well. Uh, my mom lives in Brantford. There's one there. Um, I've seen one, I think, in... I think there is actually one in Durham region that, that's fairly large. Okay. So I, I don't know where the inspiration for the groups got. I, I can't claim that, that they're they're after, after my group, but I, I, it's nice to see that um, the... Um, concept of, of having a support group has really taken off in a bunch of areas. Coming back to that point you made earlier about uh, the percentages that people like Uber Eats, I think it was Uber Eats and Skip the Dishes and these guys take. Well, first of all, I guess, what, what would you say to people who are thinking of getting takeout in the next few days? Uh, you said just go straight to the restaurant, but should they go and always try and pick it up themselves? Or I was thinking, I mean, you could almost have like a community delivery service or something that would be <laughs> would be like a, a wheeze to get around these people because the margins are, are running restaurants are always pretty thin at the best of times let alone right now i mean where they made where their higher margins were was in beverage sales like alcohol sales and now they can't really do that so so right there's thin margins on the food and so when you've got 30 cents on the dollar being taken from from one of some some of these delivery companies and i understand that they're making a living too but um that seems a little exorbitant in this time yeah i mean i, mean, I, I can imagine like you're i was thinking like your bars and pubs if you think about it like the attraction of going in there was either you're going for like a live band or you're going in mm-hmm. to watch a game with your your best buds right and you what you do you buy a pitcher of beer you buy a plate of nachos or chicken wings and uh you know and you, you spend the night watching the band watching the game and yeah next round's on me next round's on you all that stuff and so yeah when you take that away as a business model yeah i, I can see it gets tight yeah the virtual aspect of, of restaurants is 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 pretty much wiped out right so if you have a, a little pub or something um you know it, it's it's not it's not going to happen so you have to pivot and then um hope that you can make some really great food and, and, and advertise. Um, the, the one, the one thing I've heard from restaurant owners, and I don't want to demonize the, the big three skip Uber DoorDash is they, they do give them quite a bit of, of advertising. So they're, they, that's a good way to leverage, um, um, the restaurants or the, the delivery services to put something in with the delivery saying order next time direct, right? So they are able to try to turn as many of those customers towards them themselves because they are kind of a powerful advertising machine, the, those um, delivery services. So it's not all negative, but um, again, we've tried to encourage everybody on the groups um, to order direct as much as possible. And of course the restaurants have, um, 
in, in many, many cases, created their own online ordering systems. Um, because at the beginning, we were hearing people writing on the group, I, I'm trying to order my wings, we'll stick to wings, uh, <laughs> and I, I can't get through. And then because they only had a single phone line and everyone wants, wants to order at the same time. And then the restaurants were all getting bombarded and they could only make so many of that one item. Um, and so they were just saying, sorry, we, we can't make this. So they've actually been training their customers to order early, like call earlier in the day and say, hey, this is what I'd like. I'd like to pick it up at six. So it's, it's also been um, kind of a cooperation between the community and the restaurant owners to kind of you know, ease off and, and, and manage the, you know, the pickup and, and the delivery a little bit better than, than, you know, it, than they were at the beginning, at least. It's also important to say we're not, I mean, we certainly don't want to shame anyone that uses delivery. There's a purpose and a place for delivery. There's some people that just, they don't have a vehicle or they're, they're not able to drive for some reason. So that's why it's available. And by all means, use that if you, if you have to, um, because Absolutely. it's better that you use it than, than not at all. And, and on the note about setting up their own delivery service, I have, um, I have some friends who um, deliver for Uber and others have said, even if you call your insurance company and say, I'm thinking of driving for Uber, they can cancel your insurance. So you have to have special business insurance and it's much more expensive to do it that way. Um, so yeah. trying to set up the um, delivery for an independent restaurant is quite challenging. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so looking ahead with the next few months, obviously we're all hoping that a vaccine's on the way, but I was just literally just before I came on looking at the numbers of, of how many vaccinations a day would have to be done to get it done within a year. It's something like 11,000, some crazy number. Anyway, what do you think the restaurant industry sort of needs going forward to you know, is there anything that should have been done thus far that, say, from the province or forever, from whoever, that could have made things easier than it currently is? You know, whether it's just more support coming from the provincial government, whether it's whatever. Do you think there are things that, that were kind of missed that should have happened? I think... You know, I'm, I'm not going to fault the government for, I mean, no one's had to deal with this before in our lifetime. So uh, I don't lay any blame or fault them necessarily, but it does seem like this latest, these latest rules, a 10 people per, you know, 10 patrons per establishment, regardless of the size of the establishment, they seem a little arbitrary. So I don't think a lot of thought, I think less haste, it seemed like a hasty decision. Um, restaurants, I would encourage them to just, you know, definitely keep their voice, like use their voice to, to speak out and to, you know, reach out for help and get, you know, communicate with the government, um, their needs, but definitely I would do so kind of obeying the rules. Cause there's a lot of people that, um, get really up, still quite uptight. If they, if they don't see, even though there was exemptions to masks and things like that, we found that a lot of people wanted to complain about the, the, if they saw a server not having a mask on or, or, or not have following the right protocols. And we kind of shut that down because we realized that there were rules in place and we weren't here to uh, debate the rules on our group. By all means, do that on the, the officials' websites or the officials' pages where they're making the rules, but just letting people know that these are the rules as they stand. So um, I, I would hope that the government then would give a lot more thought to to some of these decisions they're making. The, the 10 rule seems a little arbitrary. You can have a tiny, tiny little place and have a maximum of 10. Granted, they have to be spaced a certain amount, so they probably couldn't fit 10. But in a huge capacity restaurant, to be only allowed 10 just seems a little arbitrary, not, not well thought out, really. It's certainly a tough one from all sorts of perspectives. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily want to put you on the spot on that because what you're doing is, is taking such a different angle on the whole, on the whole issue and, uh, and such a positive one. So um, I see our, our time is quickly approaching the end, but I wanted to ask one lighthearted question, both you, Sandy and Trevor. And I'm just curious to know, is there any cuisine that you have discovered that you now love after eating all these from all these restaurants that you didn't know existed before? I'm not going to say a specific restaurant because I think that would definitely put you on the spot. But just wondering, like, is there a cuisine that you're like, oh, I didn't know this was tasty? Uh, I definitely, I, I 
tried more Indian cuisine than I had, than I'd had before. I'd had some of the sort of the, the basics, the, the more popular dishes, but I dove into some of the, the ones I had not tried before. And that was a lot of fun. And I love Mexican. So it was, was great to, to try some of those as well. I'm seconding you on, on Indian food that just, uh, as someone who grew up in Britain, I, I found it difficult that it's like I need at least another hundred Indian restaurants nearby. <laughs> it's been really great. The ones that we had, there's so many places we didn't even know existed. And it was great because we would, for years, we drove by them going to work or coming home from work and saying, oh, what that place is like. And now we know people, people actually ate there. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have, I have eaten a lot in the last few months. Yeah, uh, I've got some COVID weight for sure. <laughs> but, uh, all right, me too, yeah. uh, for, for me, um, there's actually, I, I didn't even know what a Peruvian restaurant was. So I discovered that there's a Peruvian restaurant near our house and I got to try some other food. That was really good. Uh, as well as some Colombian food as well. So empanadas and uh, there's a couple of Colombian restaurants in the city as well. So yeah, so we, we got to discover so many places. Um, like Sandy said, I, I, I driving across the city to work every day, I probably passed some of the restaurants that we got to try during COVID hundreds, if not thousands of times. And so finally through the power of the group, we got some recommendations to try them. So it's been great. Well, it's always one of the best things about this country is I think you can eat the world and never have to leave, <laughs> leave your borders. I'm going to say we're going to end it there. I'd like to thank both you, Trevor and you, Sandy for coming on and thank you for all the great work that you guys are doing with the, the restaurant groups. I'm sure all the restaurant tours in, uh, the 905 and beyond appreciate the, the work that you're doing and stay safe and happy holidays to both of you. Thank thanks, you. Thanks you as invite. well. Thanks, thanks very so much. much. Thank you. That's it for this episode of the 905 er Thank you for listening. As always, you can send us your feedback, thoughts and concerns or ideas for future episodes to our email info at 905er.ca. We'd love to hear from you. You can help us keep the 905er going by financially supporting us through Patreon as well as PayPal. Visit us at 905er.ca and click on the support tab. As well, links are in the show notes for your convenience. Lastly, you can find us on social media. Search for the underscore 905er on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So long for now. See you next time. to make the most out of this life and optimize your personal wellness then check out the natural man podcast join me host mike c as we explore all areas of human wellness physical mental and emotional learn strategies to optimize your own well-being and be in the driver's seat of your own health remember your doctor works for you learn biohacks neurohacks ways to improve sleep and ways to optimize your body and your mind. Check us out on Apple, Spotify, the Fountain app, and at naturalmanpodcast.com.